الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, I won't be long this morning. I know everybody's been up. So just a reminder about the value of these last 10 nights of Ramadan and how pivotal they are to a life-changing experience. Tonight, the night we just passed was the 21st night and as you know that these nights in any one of these, especially in the nights uh, that are odd, uh, Rasulullah said that look for the Laylat al-Qadr, in, in these, especially in the odd nights. And there are many, many ahadith that I just wanted to make this brief. Uh, the important thing to remember in these nights is to do as much as you can in terms of ibadah. Uh, the ibadah being like things uh, like not only salah, by reading the Qur'an, by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, imploring Allah to change your life, to help you to change your life, to, to help you to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, uh, to give you uh, the insight uh, into the various ayat and the hadith and different things that you read about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you come closer to Him uh, during these nights and, and to really bear down and focus in these last 10 nights. Because this was the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam that he used to really bear down in these last 10 nights. He was, uh, any of the the, uh, the busyness of the dunya, he used to just put it aside, you know, and he concentrated heavily during these 10 nights on, you know, on his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is what he left behind for us to follow as well. Um, and as you know, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullu ummati yadkuluna jannah illa man abha. My entire ummah will enter Jannah except those who refuse. And the Sahaba asked him, وَمَنْ يَخْمَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Who would refuse, O Messenger of Allah, to go to Jannah? And he said, مَنْ أَطَعْنِي دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ أَعْصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى That the one who obeys me shall enter paradise, and the one who disobeys me, he has refused to go to paradise, in essentially. So, uh, in these last ten nights, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that what dua should I make? And this uh, dua is very telling because it's all about forgiveness. And uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, told her that the dua that you should, should say is Allahumma innaka afu wan tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni That oh Allah, you are the most forgiving innaka afu wan tuhibbu al-afwa that you love to forgive uh, fa'afu anni So forgive me. Forgive me. And in that, you know, to constantly repeat this dua as often as you can, as, as much as you can, this dua, not only at night, but also you can do it during the day. But one thing to remember as you're making this dua is that our forgiveness, asking Allah for forgiveness, may hinge on the fact of us forgiving others. Us forgiving others. Because in Surah uh, An-Nur, Surah 24, Ayah 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا People should forgive and they should overlook, they should, they should pardon people. Because أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Wouldn't you want Allah to forgive you? Wouldn't you love for Allah to forgive you? وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ Rahim. Surely Allah is the most forgiving and the most merciful. So in, in, especially in these ten nights, you know, if you have any grudge or any negativity, any hostility towards anyone, forgive them for the sake of Allah. Because Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive you. Have a clean heart. Have an open heart. Have, have, have a heart that, that, is only, that is only immersed in the remembrance of Allah, not in the hostility towards other, others in His creation. You know, the heart should be totally absorbed with the, uh, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That's where the heart should be. It should, the heart should not waste any moment of its life in thinking about other human beings in a bad way. In a good way is fine, meaning that to help other human beings, because that's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so this is, uh, inshallah, one, uh, one critical thing that to, uh, it's an opportunity for us to really cleanse our hearts, open our hearts, and forgive each other. Uh, remember the whole incident of Laylatul Qadr and not for us not knowing exactly which day, which night, you know, which night is Laylatul Qadr. The, uh, um, and, and, you know, this knowledge was taken from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting what that incident was. And uh, that incident was basically that, uh, as uh, you, some of you may have read about it, that uh, um, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was coming to tell the people about, you know, when the Laylatul Qadr was. And, but, but it was, that knowledge was taken from him because what happened was, as he was coming to tell people, he came across some people who were arguing. Who, who were arguing with each other. And it was, you know, because of this, he, uh, you know, this knowledge was taken from him. So, the point being that in forgiving others, you know, you may have some dispute with another person. Forgive that person for the sake of Allah. Because don't you want Allah to forgive you? It's not worth it. It's not worth to waste a moment on a human being just because of some little dispute, whatever it may be. And you wasted that moment by not thinking about Allah, by not being mindful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because being mindful of Allah means that Allah will protect you. In a hadith, Rasulullah was telling Abdullah ibn Abbas, the young man, that, you know, be mindful of Allah and Allah will safeguard you, Allah will protect you. You find Allah in front of you. You know, so, so uh, it's, that's why it's so critical. And this is why Rasulullah Wasallam encouraged us never to get involved in an argument, even if you happen to be right. Even if you think you're right, avoid the argument. Discussion, yes. Avoid, uh, argument, no. Get out of it immediately. Because that develops animosity and hostility towards each other, and that's what we don't want among the believers. The believers should be one family, one brotherhood. <inaudible> that the believers are but one brotherhood. And that's why Rasulullah he said, <inaudible> I guarantee a house in the lower parts of paradise for who? Whoever leaves arguing, even if they happen to be right, even if they're right, you, you got a house in paradise. Imagine every time there's an argument ensuing and, and you, you leave that argument. You know, politely, of course. You know, you, you don't, you know, you, you don't disrespect the other person by, by saying, oh, I'm leaving the argument. You can stay, keep arguing. No, but just politely, you you leave, you gently get out of the argument. And then he went on in the hadith, he said, وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَثِرِ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَازِحًا And I guarantee a house for the person who leaves lying, even if it's in jest, even in joke. You know, you know the famous thing that people say, oh, it's just a white lie, you know? It's, nobody's going to get hurt. But even in joking, he's saying that if you leave the line, then you get a house in the middle of paradise. And uh, um, a house in the high, higher parts of paradise, in the highest parts of paradise, for the one whose manners are refined. The ones who's, uh, who has good manners and everything. So, inshallah, I, I just wanted to just share that with you for uh, this this morning. I know everybody's been up, inshallah, get some rest and prepare for the next night. And uh, take full advantage of these nights. Uh, if you can take off work during these 10 nights, try to do so. Just to concentrate, read the Qur'an. If you haven't got a chance to finish the Qur'an uh, or start it, you know, start during these 10 nights and try to read three juz every day or three or three or four juz every day. And, uh, and if you, obviously, the best thing to do is to read it with the meanings. Um, and 
so you understand what the Quran is saying. And you know, Subhanallah, if you read the Quran with, uh, with um, you know, with the meanings uh, and with the heart in the right place, you know, it should do to us exactly what happened. Like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran that if we brought this Quran down on a mountain, it would crumble from its humility it's towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. A mountain, imagine. So how about our hearts? Are they harder than mountain? That's something for each one of us to determine in these last 10 nights. You know, what, what can we do? How can we humble the, this heart and put it in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has requested us to do? It's a powerful, powerful message that the Quran gives us. That it can, how it can humble us, it can soften us, it can make us tractable and flexible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, uh, as always, thank you so much for this thing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan the most fruitful Ramadan in our lives. May He make it a life-changing experience for each and every one of us and for our families and our community. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make these last 10 nights of Ramadan uh, the best 10 nights. You know, Laylatul Qadr, that, that night, all of you know about this, about the thousand months is worth it. If, if it was the day of the Qadr, then everything you did is, is like a thousand months of worship, like 30,000 days of worship. You know, that's very powerful. You know, and like for example, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi he says in the hadith that, um, you know, whoever stands up in Salah on the day of the Qadr, I'm just translating the meanings of the hadith, that whoever stands up in, in Salah um, and on the day of the Qadr and uh, the, uh, the, the, on the night of Qadr uh, with full belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is the right thing to do and this is what it was going to be pleasing to Allah uh, and then expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not from other human beings but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then their previous sins will be forgiven and, and this uh, uh, most of the scholars the majority say this applies to minor sins but there are some scholars who say that even the major sins can be forgiven if you do tawbah in the proper way. If, if Allah accepts your tawbah, then you have a chance for your major sins to be forgiven as well. Okay, inshallah, we'll finish there. Jazakumullah khairan, uh, brothers and sisters, always, uh, as always, for listening. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this the best Allah for each and every one of us. Subhanahu wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa an, astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk, wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.